What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Dad Fall. We back and we live. Happy New Year's 2019, audience. I'm glad that y'all here with me in 2019 um, to click on episode eight of the Dev Hall Show. Um, I'm going to get right into it. Sandra Bland is an um, African American who was stopped by um, a rape. I, I don't even want to say a rape. A police officer, and uh, she was stopped for a, a traffic violation, a signal, a signal change. She didn't turn her turn signal on while she was making the turn. You know, so if y'all watch that documentary, um, it will open your eyes to see how crooked or corrupt America is, in especially Texas. Um, that documentary was about an hour and 41 minutes, so if y'all had the time to watch some BS, y'all had the time to get educated on what's going on around the world. Um, they actually try to frame, they try to make it seem like this lady was a pothead. Um, yes, a lot of people smoke weed. You know, weed is not going to destroy someone. It depends on how you use it. But this person was stopped. You know, they made it seem like she was being real combative because she was high. Like, this lady wasn't high at the moment. This person was minding her business, driving, keeping it a beam, driving, going down to, I believe, further down in Texas. She wanted to start a protest for um, injustice for African Americans or towards African Americans. And, you know, she was rudely interrupted by a cop. She was slammed to the ground. Um, you know, and they said that she committed suicide inside of her cell. If y'all watch the documentary, you know, the lady said she was in so much pain that she couldn't even lift her arm up damn near due to the fact that the cop had put her knee in her back. So they made it seem like she tied a noose with a trash bag. How did a trash bag get inside of her cell? You know, um, for those that have been locked up, they say that they remove all the things that can harm you. You know, but, you know, niggas can get away with a lot of shit. You can get away with shit. But in this particular moment, it was a trash can inside of her cell. No camera inside of, or near that cell. She was a woman. The only woman in that cell or in that jail at the particular moment. So why are you singling out this woman by herself with no cameras? You know, so how are y'all protecting or supervising this cellmate if she was allegedly in there? You know, it was rumors that she was dead. Um, I don't mean it sounds so rude or, I mean, not rude, but so blunt or explicit, but she was deceased or um, did when she took her mugshot, you know? People felt as though that was bullshit. But if y'all watch the documentary and believe in conspiracies, I believe that shit, like I, I really do. It's a lot of things that didn't happen. It really is. They said that she made 21 phone calls. How the hell y'all don't know what phone she used? Like, where is she going? Like, that's the stuff I be talking about, you know? And But we were so focused on watching Bird Box, I'm not gonna lie to you, Bird Box was a good movie to me. Like, it was a real good movie. But it's just something that we need to just actually open our eyes to. We need to see what's going on instead of following what's popping. You feel what I'm saying? You know, do y'all know about what happened recently about a 15 year old putting her baby in a dumpster? I don't know if y'all know about that. A 15 year old put her baby in a dumpster and charged with murder. 15. Let me say that one more time. 15, teenager, you feel what I'm saying? A lot of people all fast, they had kids and shit. And now, look at this. They said that the lady suffered, the, I ain't gonna say lady, the teenager suffocated um, the baby and put her in a dumpster. And how that happened? Somebody on her team told on her. You feel what I'm saying? Like, this is, this is real. I wasn't there, I'm not, a, I'm not her friend, I'm not a friend of the family, none of that. This is what Action News is telling everybody. So, you know, Google it, you feel me? It's sad, yo. It should have said, you know, um, someone was shot at the start of 2019. A kid was shot in the head. 19 year old shot in the head. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going on, man. Y'all follow everything the celebrities tell y'all to do, right? Meek told y'all to put the guns down for New Year's Eve and the New Year's, you know. But I guess that wasn't a cool thing Meek did for y'all, right? But he dropped championships, and y'all was blasting that. Why can't y'all listen to that? You feel me? I don't understand what the hell. Y'all getting out of killing each other, yo. But when a white person kills someone, everyone is in an uproar. I just don't, I don't get that shit. I, I don't get it at all. You know, um, to each his own, a lot of people got situations. A lot of people are in predicaments where they need to have theirs. Shit, we live in Philly, everybody need to carry. But at the end of the day, it's a lot of nut ass people that's carrying, they don't know what the hell they doing. You know, I seen a post not too long ago. They said, why the hell you, you ain't shoot shit all year. Why the hell you want to bring your gun out December 31st? That's real. And there's a lot of niggas that's like that, yo. 
It really is. You shooting this, you shooting your gun in the air for what? Just to say, hey, I got a gun, I wanna make some noise, I wanna be the center of attention. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Maybe the older I got, the more I mature. But at the end of the day, I was young and dumb at the time. But at the end of the day, I feel as though a lot of people need to mature and look at the finer things in life, you know? Um, one thing I wanted to mention as well, this thing about <clears throat> this R. Kelly situation. I know it's airing tonight. Surviving R. Kelly. Mm, 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 mm. This is a touchy, um, a touchy uh, topic or subject. Um, you know, it's been a lot of sexual allegations going on towards African Americans, and uh, you're gonna start with Bill Cosby. You can start with, um, I mean, we're gonna end with Bill Cosby. I don't even want to keep going and de 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 depict these African Americans. You feel me? But they started with Bill Cosby. They got him in jail for God knows when, and now they're trying to frame R. Kelly. R. Kelly already threatened to sue Lifetime if they even think about airing it. Well. Too late, R. Kelly, because they airing that joint tonight and everybody watching it. You got your ex-wife on there crying tears, bruh. You feel me? You got other, all these other people saying that you did, you, you had sex with Aaliyah when she was 15. We knew you was messing with her, but oh, come on, Kels, come on, bruh. Like, don't get me wrong, bro. I feel as though you the king of R&B, but on that extra shit, it's a lot of females that saying this, bro. It's a lot, dog, and you still out here a free man. I ain't, I ain't trying to set you up at the end of the day. I got to watch it. I got to see how it's going. But a lot of people saying, yo, it's for the money. That's what the lawyer said. The lawyer said these allegations is false, and they out here just doing it for the money. Shit, I believe it, because a lot of people be doing this shit for the money. But then again, like I said, I don't want to be a judge a book by its cover. I want to watch it and see if these stories is adding up. Because if y'all actually watch shit, stories tend to get misconstrued and then you have some witnesses or whatever um, starting to fall back from the case because they was fraud and they was lying. So I'm going to actually um, dissect this episode and I'm going to pay close attention to surviving R. Kelly and see how it is. Um, but before I really end this segment, it's a lot of rappers in the city um, that's making noise. A lot of rappers in the city that's making noise. Um, you know, I'm about to drop another rap segment, the rap segment part three of the Dev Hall show. Um, we had Kyle on the show. We had Famos on the show. We had Mitch Leakes on the show. We had a lot of different um, up and coming artists on the show. Um, but this particular artist, um, he goes by the name Fake Free, you know, KP, K Price. You know, he represents in the Southwest. But um, I'm going to introduce him. So just stay tuned. Wrapped out, I ain't talking or discussing. Soon as I see this nigga, let my ratchet get the bussin'. Strap like I'm fucking, let it clap, fry his onion shit. I want to beat up on him. If this nigga try running, I just don't care no more. Life I don't feel for it. So if a nigga act crazy, he getting killed for it. I'm bone crushing with this bone crusher. Take me to jail when I take me to hell. Motherfucker, I'm built for it. Neck up, I ain't doing no leg shit. This Mac will rest in peace, him. I ain't talking no crack shit. Tried to embarrass me, told him not to push me. Mm hmm. See his ass right there. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Death Far. I told you we back, man. We got fake free KP in the damn building. I already told y'all we had a special guest, y'all. What's up, man? How you doing, KP? Right, yo. hey, you fucked my name up the first time. I did. <laughs> I did. I ain't gonna lie. We had to do a little edit and shit, but we gonna act like everything's smooth. You know, he kept it a bit. He kept it a bit. He kept it a bit. <laughs> fake free KP. Uh-huh. Fake free KP, I be getting a lot of people that be telling me it's a tongue twister. It is in a sense. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> I can curse, right? Yeah, do you think that? Fucking Black De Niro, Gilly, Southside Jew. Mm. A lot of people be like, yo, feet. <laughs> be like, yo, freak. You know what I'm saying? Molly Cobain, the dirty boy. Yeah. He, he be like, <laughs> Fake free P, like, so it's fake free KP, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's just like, if you suck a free, I'm I'm fake free, free mm. of fake shit, you know what I'm saying? That's all. And KP, my name, KP, that's short for Kyle Price. 
Okay. My whole name, you know what I'm saying? All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, for those that's watching, you know, I met this guy, you know, KP, at a rap event. Um, actually, it was a pop-up shop. Um, Father Stretch My Bands, my man Dio. It was, yeah, um, Dio. He had a show in Philly, or a, shop, um, a showcase in Philly, and he had some rappers um, showing love, and he was one of the rappers there. And I was sitting in the crowd just chilling, you know, I'm observing all the talent in the room. And he hopped on a mic, and the first thing I heard was, hey, yo, bitch! So, you know, when you hear that, you know, everybody, oh, shit, even though if he's not talking, you know, right? like, and like, who the fuck are you talking to? So everybody, oh, everyone's attentive to who, who said it. He got everyone attention, started rapping, but like, I want to know what inspires you to rap, man? Um, I always loved rap since like a young age. I was rapping at like, since like fifth grade, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Uh, I always loved music. What really motivated me to rap was like, what got me into it, into it, like, cause I always loved music. I always just loved the sound of hip hop, everything. What got me like, start taking it like kind of serious, like my, my cousin Calvin, he used to always be rapping and get like we used to we used to like do little shit on the karaoke and stuff like that. And right. then like we used to uh do like the Audacity. Yeah, Remember I need that program. Yeah, I need yeah, we used to do that, like just young boys and then I started taking from what taking from what we was doing and like rapping in school, like in middle school and uh I started like getting people's attention and like I started battling people. I was like in middle school battling like high schoolers, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like really going toe to toe with dudes. And uh, once I started realizing I was getting people attention and like people was like, yo, you actually kind of nice. I started like really rapping more and right. writing more and writing more. And uh, I always would take my music to my brother, my brother Bub, he, he right there. Mm -hmm. um, like try and get his, his approval basically like, Cause he was running with uh takedown dudes at the time and he was like real influential on me like that was like a whole crazy southwest movement mm. uh mm. he was mixing mixing uh mixing shit together with state prop and the rock and right. all that at the time so it was like real important to me to like get his, his stamp mm -hmm. but he would always tell me my shit was trash mm -hmm. like you know what i'm saying like, right so it means you want to work going, harder yeah. right, 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 <laughs> I understand. Saying, all right made me want to go at it even more so i just like i go harder write more, taking more music, taking more music, and then uh, I just kept rapping. Sooner or later, he came around and was like, all right, that joint, all right, right. all right, that joint, cool. Like, I, it took a while for me to get like, uh, all right, like, yeah, yeah. that joint was all right. <laughs> you know no, I believe, like, I believe. No, that shit corny, cool. like, this, like, that joint, all right. right. So then once I got the all right, then more and more, I just work and work and work. And then we started Move Makers uh, in 2011. Um, 2011, we started, got out of the situation with uh, a couple folks, fell through, it didn't really, really pan out the way it was supposed to. Mm -hmm. Life happened. I went to school uh, for a lot of different reasons. I went to college. Mm -hmm. you know, I went to Westchester University. Mm -hmm. um, there, I was, I was doing a lot of different things before school and while I was in school, so right. it was like, I took a, a mentality up there. I ended up getting kicked out of school. Mind you, I'm still rapping and doing everything that I've always been doing, making music. Mm -hmm. I uh, wasn't doing as many shows, but I did like stuff here and there, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, I got kicked out of school, still rapping, fought my way back in, uh, graduated. Mm -hmm. I graduated like 17, 2017, mm -hmm. uh, uh, May. So I finished that and then it was just like, once I was done, I was like, damn, do I, do I wanna work or do I wanna really do what I love to do? You know what I'm saying? It was like, music was really my, my, my passion and it's always been my love. So it was like, I had made a choice to, to, to do what I really wanted to do. And right. since I put my mind to it and I ain't let nothing get in the way, not gel, not, not getting kicked out of school, not nothing get in my way. Not people dying, not nothing. It was like, now I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. tunnel vision. And by you saying that, I was watching one of your interviews and I noticed that you said um, you really wasn't taking uh, rap serious or you really wasn't giving, giving it, I'm paraphrasing it, of course, but you really wasn't giving it your undivided attention because you yeah. had a lot of shit going on. Yeah, yeah. And it's just funny because you yeah. just mentioned that. You said um, you had people around you dying. Do you yeah. Had, um, it would either be finances or yeah. jail things in this sort. Yeah. Could you elaborate on that? Um, well, like I said, when I was in school, I was rapping, like, 
school was like this is my whole thing i i wasn't like a, a geeky dude in, in high school and no shit like that like i was like a, a dude that was like popular for rapping you know what i'm saying throughout my whole school like from elementary on up you know right. what i'm saying like it was what i was like mm-hmm. i was a rapper the boy that rapped Right. The black nigga that rap, you know what I'm saying? That's how people <laughs> yeah. looked at me. Like, yeah, yeah. Kyle, which Kyle? Right, right. The black rapping nigga. Yeah, like, yeah. That's how they, that's right, how right. they recognized me. Right. So it was like, I always was doing that. And then it was like, when I got to high school, I just was fucking around. Like, I, I, I had like a two, one GPA. Like, mm-hmm. I messed up throughout my whole high school career. Fucked up, was fighting, doing all type of stuff. So it was like, a lot of that stuff was getting in the way. So when I did decide, I'm like, damn, do I want to go to college? It was like, I I decided to go to college because of my environment. Right. It wasn't because it was like... Something you really wanted. Yeah, to it was right. like, I, I need to get the fuck out of here. Right, right. Like, I need a way to get out of here. Right. And that was like my outlet. Mm-hmm. So mind you, when I'm going through school, that's a that's in my way because it's like you got classes mm-hmm. you gotta be you got adms all the shit nah, thanks. you don't got you got it you got it you a student now you right, got a right, student right. life now you right. don't just got your life so it was it was class then it was like my mindset was still from the hood mm-hmm. so going to jail and then getting kicked out and then before that running around hustling and getting in the way getting in my own way of a lot of shit and mm-hmm. like people around me Dying, my old heads, you know what I'm saying? People going to jail, like, <clears throat> shit my brother would get into, would, 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 I'd be thinking about a lot of shit, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? My family, like, my grandmothers, like, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of stuff that I, I let get in my way. And then I get in my own way sometimes, like, you know what I'm saying? You might not feel like doing something, or you might, like, nah, I'm gonna do it tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? No, right, right, right. I'm gonna do something tomorrow, like, that would get in my way. So it was a lot of different things. Like sometimes you don't need a lot to get in your way. I had a lot that was in my way, but sometimes you don't need a lot to get in your way. You could be the person in your way. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm. so that's really what what, what, a, what shit was. Like if you from where I'm from, I'm from Southwest Philly, 55th and Woodland Avenue, and I, a little bit of 70th Street. So if you from around that area, you know the things that might get in your way from growing up and, and just being around and going outside, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's really what the things that was getting in my way. Well, let's fast forward um, in life <clears throat> by uh, by everyone just hearing that, you know, the struggle and, you know, the obstacles that he, he had to overcome to be in this position right now that, that we have in this conversation. Um, you know, I'm not sure if y'all noticed, but he went viral on social media, went viral <coughs> on um, you went rival everywhere, damn where. You know, how, you know how people are like, yo, check my music, it's on every platform. It's like, if you want to be on some a media outlet platform, he was there, you know, that I could think of. Well, the notable ones, you know, yeah. World Star, um, and, and this the Explore page that I can go off. I don't want to name anything that I didn't see, but those two right there is big enough. Uh, Paul. But um, I just wanted to um, mention congratulations on that, too. I appreciate it. It was a message behind it, you know. Um, like I said, when I met you before, <clears throat> actually, I think I met you after that video. Yeah. I met you after the video. I'm like, all right, you know, I think this boy gonna be there, and um, I believe you're a cap. Uh, yeah, I'm yeah, a new. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, what you call him? I got a, you know, the reason <laughs> I knew that cap. I had to throw that in there and shit. You know, I didn't want to throw the wrong yeah. friend out there. The um, yeah. reason I say that because you know I know a lot of um, uh, we have a lot of mutual homies or um yeah. people that we know, and um, I know a couple of them as well. And the reason I mentioned that, I wanted to say. You had a lot of love behind that shit. A lot of people were reposting that video. I actually reposted the video. It was a yeah. message behind it. Um, so I wanted to know what feedback did you get from that to um, motivate you to drop that video or just deliver that message? You saying what feedback I got prior? Both, or prior, or actually prior? both, both, both. Um, um, before and <clears throat> yeah, before and after. Well, me and uh, I was doing videos like. Like, I, I was always making music with, like, messages in them, you know what I'm saying? But then, like, when I started, because I was working on my album before I did start doing an Instagram, my album, One Man to Realities. It hasn't, I haven't put it out yet because I, I got uh, another project that I'm doing right now. When it, we'll get into that, you know what I'm saying? But 
I was working on my my album, One Man to Realities, and I was just making a lot of music. So it was like once I had enough music in the studio, mm. I'm like, I'm gonna do the Instagram shit, like, cause everybody doing the Instagram shit, mm. and I want I want to see if I could capitalize off that and and draw people into my music. So my plan was to really uh get like my plan that the summer that the summer I went viral, which was last summer, right? Yeah, mm. last summer. Mm. So my plan was to just like. <clears throat> Just keep making content, quality content. Don't worry about numbers. And by the end of the summer, I should have like 10,000 followers. You know what I'm saying? I'm just mm -hmm. like, I'm going to just rhino it out. Like, just put my head down and just go. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, uh, the feedback I was getting prior to going viral was just like, was good. It was like, people was paying attention. Like, my first drawing was Gummo. And it was like, I had like, I don't even know how many followers I had. I had like <laughs> 2,000 maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. 1800 or something like that mm -hmm. and the first gummo joint the uh the 6 9 yeah, beat, yeah i was on some i just was rapping like just in, in southwest rapping and the ziffy uh tady got the blicky up my man tate mm -hmm. and it was like i was like tell 6 9 need to get on a remix and like i had like 100 comments and like 1500 views just like off that one video and i'm like right. oh like and i only right. got like 1800 right, 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 right. So oh like, Oh, all right, right, like right, right, they, right. Feel, they, they might, they might, this might be something they need to see. So then right. I just kept working, and then I was like, after a while, I started developing. Like, I had this the Colin Kaepernick joint. Yeah, I seen that one. Yeah, and that was like. Listen, I don't mean to cut you off, but before I, um, before you elaborate on that, when we seen that video, me and my man was watching that joint, right? So mm -hmm. I'm actually listening to the message. My man is by actually looking at the jersey. He like, yo, dog. I need to get me a, Ka a Kaepernick jersey. Yeah, okay, that's, no. Like you gotta yeah. understand, it's not even because it's Kaepernick. It's because it's Kaepernick, and I'm yeah. like, yo, I understand. Like, then let's get back to the message he said. Yeah, but you can elaborate on that. But uh, it just was like um, the Kaepernick jersey was like, all right, he he a new, and mm -hmm. it's like it's it got it got a lot of. Uh, a meaning to that jersey, like right. that jersey yeah, yeah. means a lot. Right, it's not just, just like cause a jersey. Kaepernick. Right, yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. Because he Kaepernick, right, right. It's like, it represents a lot. So mm -hmm. it was like, once I did that, and I seen the feedback I got off that, because I'm like, damn, because I was, I had, a, I had a, a lady friend who was like, uh, I think you should like, she was like, because you got mu message with mu music with messages, and she like, I think you should do more of that on the gram too. She was like. Mm. She was like, you should probably do like every other Monday. One Monday you you do freestyles about, you know, talking shit. And then the next drum, maybe you do like messages. And then I'm like, that ain't a bad idea. All right. So then I did it with the Kaepernick drum. And it was like, I got like 8,000 views. And from, I had like 3,000 followers. And that's going from the jump. You seen a jump from 1,500. Yeah. yeah. That was like, no, no, no. That wasn't like, that was like months later. Like, oh, okay, like okay, months okay, later. Okay, yeah. Okay, so okay. months later, I did the Kaepernick drum. And I'm like, all right, but then I was like, I started doing more messages, like, cause I, like I said, I always had music with messages from the corner to Dirty Money to like a lot of my old music, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So once I did that, my feedback was going crazy, and then it was like mindset. I don't even know how I got that idea, right? Like mindset before murder. It just, it was sometimes that just happened to me. Like I just have an idea one day. Mm -hmm. Like damn, nah, that's like something dope. It ain't nobody. I ain't talking to nobody. I ain't had no conversation with nobody about nothing. It just came to me, mm -hmm. and it was like it happened. And then after that, the aftermath, like the feedback as far as the aftermath, it did 18 million worldwide. It's still, it's still going up too. I don't think you heard that number right. Yeah, you just talking about thousands and shit. No, 18 million. You heard 18 million. I don't think you heard. You know what I'm saying? Then uh. The ones, the mindsets after that, like part two, three, they combined for like a couple million too. So, uh, damn, it's a second I, guess that I got. That ain't my million. Yeah, that ain't that ain't that ain't. It just was God, man. Honestly, right. And just hard work. Another thing you said that as well in another <clears throat> interview. You said you don't just be out here putting out music. You feel yeah. Me? Like you really want to, in a sense perfect your craft or you yeah. want to, you wanted to be close to perfection yeah like um and i noticed that you you dropped uh the, the uh, it was um the mixtape yeah it was a tape ah oh, don't tell me the name was, <laughs> i'm trying to think Hold on, wait. it was a tape it was the the warm up no that no, wasn't the warm up cool. I'm I'm just, just, the, that's the ranch all track we got we ain't put that all yet <laughs> i'm dropping exclusive and shit i even know it. uh damn it was you know what I'm saying. You know what um, the build up. The build up, yeah. The anticipation in a sense. Yeah, the build up. The build up um, was really just 
uh, all my throwaways for uh, it was my throwaway tracks and my uh, like not my throwaways but like my my hum like this my this for y'all. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it was like uh, in my in my Mood Maker Monday freestyle. So once I uh, I had already planned on dropping a mixtape before I went viral. It was just like the same time and like the the, the I went viral on a Monday and my mixtape. I had already put it in the system to drop the release that Saturday. That was yeah. on the 14th. Right. So like all of that just like happened yeah, like perfectly. Like the timing just was perfect. So once I knew that I had like enough body of work to where I could put out a mixtape and still have my album in the tuck, it was like all right. Like and I made it like I made it like to the point where you would have thought that was like my main body of work. Okay. And it wasn't. It was a sample. It's right. a sample. Now, I asked you this off on my <clears throat> off camera. I want to ask you on camera. Mm-hmm. What differentiates yourself from other underground artists? I'm not just going to put you down <clears throat> just for Philly. Just other underground artists in general. My what differentiates me <clears throat> for one, I'm really just a breath of fresh air. I make music that has substance. I make music that got like messages. I don't just make the head nod music and stuff like that. Like, I disguise, like, I don't like to give up too much of my yeah, right. strategies, but I, I, I make music that you think, that make you think like, it's like, if you listen hard enough, I ain't talking about nothing, just regular. I ain't just talking. It, right. sound, it might have that sound, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Even like the club stuff, mm-hmm. but I'm really telling you something. Mm-hmm. If you listen hard enough, right. it's a message in it. So it, I really disguise it like that because I know like mainstream music has a sound, mm-hmm. but if you put like, it's like if, if you was listening to gospel and they didn't say nothing about God technically, right. but the message mm-hmm. is like everything that they would say. I get what you're saying. But it's just different. <laughs> I it just has saying. a hip hop sound and the sounds and the beats and my cadences and my patterns and my, my rhymes and all of that, my schemes. You know what it's I thought like, about? It's a scheme. I don't mean to cut you off. You know what I just thought about just now? I thought about Drake and um, Meek. Mm-hmm. Amen. That gospel type. Nah, beat. but that was some. That that's a whole different because that was like, I had to cut you off. Right, but like good. that's like a whole clarifier shit. That's like <clears throat> that wasn't like a, <laughs> a gospel was, type. Yeah, thing. that wasn't but like you, no you heard the, that was just like yeah. no, <laughs> Turning up, like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, you, like, I guess you can, I don't know, but like, when people first heard that jump, like the horns, it gave you like a gospel. Nah, but nah, that ain't what I, that ain't what I mean when I say that. What I mean is like the content, like what I'm actually saying, not mm-hmm. the, not the beat. The beat gonna sound like hip hoppy. Mm-hmm. I mean, like my content, what I'm telling you, mm-hmm. what I'm saying to you. Mm-hmm. You just gotta listen. If you listening, you're gonna get a message. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 what I really mean. Right. It's this is I disguise it to make it appealing. Okay. But it, it's it's all it's all it all has a message. Now, who's your favorite rapper then? Since you um are tackling these messages. No, I want I want to finish my I want to finish the the what you were saying about uh the differentiation and, and uh oh, yeah, yeah. as far as <clears throat> not just not just that but like, like I said I think I'm a breath of fresh air just for the whole hip hop community. Period, because it's like nobody, nobody's doing what I'm doing, and, and 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 people are looking for young dudes to really be making the kind of music that I'm making, and it's just my work ethic. Like, don't nobody work harder than me. I, I work hard. I'm always in a studio. I'm always doing something with my craft. I don't, I don't take no days off. I should have been here years ago. Mm. So it's like I still got a chip on my shoulder about that. I don't. And honestly, it's just my, my, I don't see nobody that can really touch me lyrically. I don't care who they is, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I consider myself to be <clears throat> a future great. Like, I'm going to be a, one of the greatest to do this. So it's like, that's what differentiates me. Some people here, they just want to get in and make the money. I want to get in, I want to make the money, but I want to be great. And that's, I, I'm not trying to just be good and just make music for you to not to. I'm a, I want to be a great, and I'm going to be. Right, and I respect that, honestly. At the end of the day, you said <clears throat> something that, this is the reason I asked you, or I cut you off by asking mm-hmm. who's your favorite rapper. Because me, I'm a lyrical listener. I love listening to lyrics. Mm-hmm. You know, Nas all time, Nas and Biggie all time is my favorite rappers. 
and um, Kendrick Lamar is my current favorite rapper. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a lyricist. And that's why I wanted to ask you that because you said you're a lyric you're a lyrically yeah. hot, so yeah. in a sense. But I just wanna know who My favorite rapper of all time is Tupac. Tupac, okay. Uh one of the more recent rappers that influenced me after the pop was like Wayne. I ain't gonna figure it was Wheezy. Yeah. For a lot of different reasons. And then Wayne's, uh he got Wayne Ball. Yeah, and then uh <laughs> and Hove. Hove was Hove was a big influence. But right now my favorite rapper is is probably like uh dudes y'all ain't heard about like East West, like Hermes. underground dudes, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like and uh but if we talk about mainstream, it's definitely cool, definitely J. Cool, uh Kendrick and uh Believe it or not, I like I like Tory Lanez a lot. Tory Hart, right. his albums yeah, like, are like creatively, like he's 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 a, he's a bull. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I love creative people. And Tierra Weck, she she one of my favorites. Like she's like, I don't know what drugs she be on when she make up music, but yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> she no, be on some shit. Like and I I fuck with it heavy. I respect the hell out of her. Are you mentioning yeah. these different artists? Um, is there anyone that you'll be willing to open openly work with? That you haven't worked with? That I have. I'm been on the work with everybody, as long as it makes sense. Right. You know what I'm saying? Now, I want to get back on the social media. Now, I'm going to ask you this question, because I like to ask a lot of questions on my show. You know, mm -hmm. you might not like it, but you just let me know, because the people watching. Yeah. Now, you have people, because um, it's two people that I think of, you uh -huh. and this boy named Fees Binger. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you heard the similarity. Yeah. Is there any similarities no. to you? Right. I'm, a, I'm a, and I, mind you, I don't. I don't uh, not feast like when I when when things first took off for me in the summertime I reached out to feast mm -hmm. uh, just out of respect saying because he was like showing a lot of love and I'm like yo I really respect what you do because it mm -hmm. seemed like you really care and like you really genuine with with, with, with with your messages and what you say mm -hmm. and I really think he he might be you know what I'm saying I haven't met him yeah yeah I, I never him. met feast shout out to feast though but we not the same at all we not mm -hmm. we not the same because. I'm going to just tell you why we're not the same. And it's not knocking anything right. he does at right. all. Because like I said, I respect what he do. Mm -hmm. But he's like a, a positive rapper. I'm not a positive rapper. Mm -hmm. I'm a reality rapper. Mm -hmm. I have real messages for you. Now, what I want you to do is to take something positive out of it. But if you don't, then I understand. Right. It's not my, my intention isn't to get you, isn't to make you do anything. It's just to present you with the information and for you to decide for yourself. We're not this, that's right. why we're not the same. I don't I don't make music to make you do anything. You're not gonna see me make a, a, a video and then like I stop whatever the vibe like if two people about to fight and I come rapping and then oh man they walk off and shake hands. I got you. Nah, if my man, my video, them niggas might fight, somebody reality. might end up dying. Nah, I feel Cause that. that's the reality of the situation. I feel now that. I'm gonna have a message in that whole situation, but <clears throat> that's the difference. You gonna get the raw reality of my of 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 my music and my videos. His his thing is a whole different thing. Nah, he trying. He wants you to make a. He wants you to make a decision. Right. I don't. I just want you to have the information and for you to make your own decision. That's the difference. Nah, that's a great explanation. I was not expecting that answer, but that was a great explanation. Yeah. To be honest with you, for those that um are confused on the difference between, I mean, differential, the differences between those two. But yeah, that, that happened to me before. Somebody like, yo, Feast, right? I said, nah, I'm, I'm KP. But like, yeah, that happened in a, no, I was in a like Chinese book. No, he just was, <clears throat> he wasn't saying we look alike. He mm -hmm. just was, it was, a, it was a, I know what he was doing. It was because we both on a gram, we both get notoriety for what right. we doing. So right. we probably got the names mixed up. Oh. But like, nah, we not the same. Right, now in the social media thing, are you planning, how are you planning to use this in 2019? Um, I'm Did really you, just planning on the music. I, yeah, I feel like everybody knows what I'm capable of on Instagram as far as like the videos and the creativity and the concepts and all that. My, my main thing is to really just get y'all to listen to the music. I got a project dropping with Jalil Beats uh, either this month or February, sometime in February. And I also got a move, my Move Maker compilation. That's my label, Move Makers Entertainment. My Move Makers compilation uh, is also dropping. So that's going to be uh, either February or the next month as well. So I got 
I'm just really trying to get y'all to focus on the music. I got a lot of a lot of stuff dropping. The project that's dropping with y'all love was uh, the Mindset Project. So it's going to have the Mindset before Murder on there. Mm. It's going to have the the, uh, the actual songs though. So okay. it's going to be a lot of stories and a lot of like different mindsets and a lot of different things on there. And it's just going to be dope. It's going to be like quality, quality music, powerful music, stuff that really touches your soul. So that's really what what my focus is with 2019. I'm 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 separating myself. That's my whole plan for 2019. Now, when um you haven't elaborated really on uh, Move Makers. Move Makers is my uh, label that I started. It was at first it was just me. Uh, it was just a rap group with me and my uh, my man John Dillinger. Shout out to him. And then it was uh, me, my brother, and John. And then uh, like I said, we got our LLC. We got our label. Um, me and my brother Bub, that's my partner. Um, we got artists on the label right now. We got Deja Monet. She is a singer. She gonna be on a compilation. We got Rari, and we got uh, Molly. Okay. Uh, Rari's like he's a vibe. He rap. He sing. Rari from out here, from out the county and all that. And uh, Molly, don't shoot him, Molly. He's 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 a spitter. So right. we got we got a couple got a lot of things coming, man. Everybody who's on the, gonna be on the compilation is pretty much people that's featured on there. It's like Ranshaw, Fox Cool. He's like a New York artist. Okay. He just uh, signed a, a Bad Boy Music Group, which is under 300 Entertainment. So he definitely a bull, and uh, just a lot of different things. Black De Niro, mm-hmm. a lot of artists gonna be on there. So yeah, we got I'm, that's really my main goal, man. Just to get y'all to focus on the music. That was my plan from the beginning. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So and it worked, but. It's time to, you know, reintroduce that. One thing I also want to, um, and speaking on reintroducing, you know, he has his Move Maker Mondays. Yeah. And um, can you elaborate on that for those that don't know? Because he's a rapper, also giving other rappers opportunities to showcase their talent yeah. as well. Move Maker Mondays is just uh, what I started with. To Like I said, I was making my album, and then I said, I'm going to do the gram. And Move Maker Mondays was what I did every Monday, just started rapping, freestyling, and then turned into the mindsets and the mindsets turned into uh hot 97 dreams turned into a lot of different things um move maker mondays not only is just rapping anymore like if i see something like people that need help as far as like houses getting burnt down i'm mm-hmm. gonna post them if i can help anybody in the community i'm gonna post them because it's like everybody is expecting something from me on a Monday. Right. So it's like, if I'm not rapping, I'm doing something, I'm putting something to the forefront. So ciphers that we hosting and putting together, I put that out, like, that That went crazy. That was like, dude, we doing a second cipher. We was gonna do it at the studio, but we, at Black City Studios, but we got a, a, a bigger venue. So that's gonna be coming soon. And we wanna really do that major. So like with judges, dope hosts like yourself, you know, things like that. So, <laughs> Appreciate it. I mean, that's that's really what we're doing. Now, I want to actually, um, we're going to end this interview like this. We noticed you was on I-95 with notable rappers. Like, yeah, I'm telling you, yeah. I'm telling you, man, 2019 may be a big thing coming for this man, man. The reason I'm saying that because, like, he was on there with, well, he wasn't on there specifically with these people, but other um, artists, such as like Sue Surf and all these other battle rappers that's on URL was on there, you feel me? And then you got KP on there. You yeah. know, he's gonna be on a lot of different shows. I can see it, man. You know, he's not just gonna go viral on Instagram or no world star. You're gonna see him on shows, hopefully, you know, in the BET Awards and things in that sort. Like, do you have plans on like tackling South by Southwest and things in that sort, or that's not in the agenda? Oh, that's in the agenda. We, I'm, this gonna be my move around year, so like I'm uh be in a lot of different states this year. Hopefully, I'll see you down there because I'm, so, yeah. I'm gonna be making <laughs> yeah, moves yeah, too. Gonna... I ain't a part of this move oh, make, yeah. move making, I'm gonna make a move. You feel me? Uh, all right, right, we, we, we gonna be down there. I'm uh South by Southwest, right? I'm gonna be out in LA, you know what I'm saying? I'm be at A3C in okay. Atlanta, be everywhere. That's you know, God willing. So, see that's you. really my plan to just do everything and be everywhere, be on more. Platforms like bars on 90, uh, 95, mm-hmm. so y'all can expect y'all can expect that type of stuff. Yeah. For so sure. let the people know where to find you at, man. Uh, Instagram, Twitter at fake free KP. One word, fake free <laughs> KP. You know, it's not not any, fake. No, no. <laughs> it's not anything else. Uh, SoundCloud, fake free KP. 
uh, all all streaming platforms is K dot price K so period and then price. Uh, that's title, Spotify, Apple Music, all that good stuff. And uh, YouTube is also fake free KP. Make sure y'all subscribe, man. Got all my Moon Maker Mondays on there. Got a couple music videos. Got a lot of different things on there. Just come through and subscribe, man. I appreciate y'all. Well, I appreciate you for even stopping by. Good luck in 2019. First in here, we here at the Dan Paul Show, episode 8. We out. Yeah, this is the warm up. So we just get warmed up. Put us in the dust, I guarantee we draw a storm up. Ain't making plays, we is the place. Don't matter how it's drawn up. Faith in God, and then we get up. Never counting on luck. I've been quite a few, quite a few, steady fighting and writing through.